Downtown Podcast. My name is Susan Hinton, I'm your co-host. This is the community segment and we're starting off with two amazing people by the names of Audrey and Callie. And they are here from the Las Vegas walking tours. You may have noticed that there's a flyer on some of your seats about it so you can read more, but we're about to actually talk to them. So uh, Callie, tell me about what the Downtown okay. Las Vegas walking tours are about. Well, Las Vegas walking tours is all about bringing people from around the world to downtown Las Vegas. Uh, we do uh, historic tours. We literally take people on a two hour walk through time, uh, obviously from Main Street and Fremont through the five blocks down to Las Vegas. And we also bring people uh, two different tours. One comes more east into this whole area. We talk about all the revival and uh, renewal that's happening. And also we go south past the, uh, the churches and of course the pawn shop and things like that. That's really cool. So, first of all, how long have you guys been doing this for so far? Well, we're a new company. We just started up about five months ago. So, Awesome. And what I like about your particular walking tour is there are a lot of walking tours in Vegas, right? And you like to concentrate on something that's not the strip, which has kind of been done to death, right? So that was kind of why you wanted to start this up, to, to kind of show people what downtown's all about, right? Yeah, exactly. I think downtown Las Vegas is unique in the country and uh, so there's a lot to be proud of here. And it seemed to be a little underrepresented in that sense. Um, you know, a lot of people come to Las Vegas and they don't leave the Strip. And we thought that was wrong. Um, we just wanted to do something about that. Audrey and I both love to take walking tours. So we took it upon ourselves to put Las Vegas walking tours together to try to get people down here to experience the community and all the, uh, the great things that are happening here. That is fabulous. And one of my favorite things about your walking tour when you go down to Fremont East is you get to introduce the, um, the people that are on the tour to the local businesses that are popping up everywhere. And, and you have this outreach with those businesses to bring them more patronage, um, but also just to show even locals that go on the tour that there's probably a lot more to, to downtown Las Vegas than they thought, right? Absolutely. Um, we obviously talk about casino history. There's a lot of legendary things going on here. Uh, but we do go back all the way into the, you know, when the, when the train station was first built and how mm -hmm. at Main Street in Fremont, that's where the city of Las Vegas literally began. So of course we, we go back that far and we talk about the casinos, but then we, when we are in the East Fremont area, uh, the walking tour business is very community minded and it's very uh, sort of grassroots sort of an activity. So we want to include all the local businesses as well as much as we can, so we're, we take a extra effort in in pointing out and promoting all the local businesses that we can to try to bring you know, our business to them. So I'd like to just take a moment to ask all the local business community, if you're interested, you know, reach out to us at Walk Las Vegas or to our email address and let us know. Uh, we're happy to hand out your business cards, any discounts or coupons that you might have. You know, because again, uh, we're, we're trying to bring business down here. Like we're, we're successful in bringing people here but we want them to stay past our tour. We want them to shop at your businesses and we want them to shop you know, and, and stay at the hotels and things like that. That's easily my most favorite thing about your business. Um, so you are having a little bit of a special here for podcast viewers, right? So you have a code that gives a discount if people want to go on a tour? Yeah, for everyone here, there's a, thing, a little flyer on your seat, but everyone at, watching at home, once this comes out, if you just enter podcast 83, I believe we're at episode 83. We are. <laughs> Excellent. So podcast 83 and you get a buy one, get one free tour. Excellent. So your, um, your website is lasvegaswalkingtours.net. Yes. Um, tell us what the email and the Twitter address is. Email is the same business name, lasvegaswalkingtours at gmail.com. And the Twitter is at walklasvegas. And again, if you can reach out to me, let us know that you're out there. We'd be happy to pick up some business cards, flyers, coupons. Of course, coupons are really, uh, you know, th they're very successful. But even if you just got cards, we're happy to hand those out. And as a result, also we have these rack cards too. And if anybody could help us out, if you got four inches of counter space that <laughs> you can take a rack card display for us, that would be very much appreciated as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Audrey and thank Kelly, you. for coming on and talking thank about you. walking tours. Give them a round of applause, guys. Okay, so I'm here with Charles Bressler, who is pretty big on the downtown scene. I've seen you on Facebook and my friend's photos. You're a really, really cool person, and I want to talk to you about your Project Dream Maker. But before we do, I'm going to get you to draw the fortune cookie of the week. You don't have to eat it. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you get to choose what the fortune will be for everyone to follow. Okay. 
So just make up the fortune? No, there's oh. actually a fortune in there. Okay. So we're going to get our fortune cookie oh, okay. handler, oh, okay. Alan. <laughs> Don't open it. And he's going to take the fortune from you. I feel like I, this is big and I should wish that I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. <laughs> right now, you're doing this really cool thing, and it's hashtag dream maker. Right. So why don't you tell me what the hashtag is about and what the actual project is? Well, the hashtag is an accident that happened due to a series of events that were, uh, how do you say this, Tr traumatic. Traumatic events. Oh, is that my? Yes, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Some traumatic events. And I thought, you know, if I don't find something positive to do, I'm going to sink into these things that are going on. And so I thought, I wonder if I could make people's dreams come true. If enough people could tweet me their dreams, enough of them I could help. And if that's true, there's a scalability to that. <laughs> and if yeah. that's true, then if we could create a hashtag that kind of grew and grew and grew, and one person helped one other person and two million people did it, then two million people would be getting help or four, I'm not good at math. So that's kind of the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So essentially you're trying to enable other people to help each other with their dreams since there's only one of you and if we can't unfortunately have a million clones of Charles. Well, so you, I'll still do it. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the thing. That's excellent. So you're developing an app, right? Tell me the story behind that. Well, I am not developing an app and I don't know how to develop an app and um, it scares me, to be honest, but <laughs> I brought a bunch of downtown leaders that were here in this community together because first I had to prove it. So f I spent the first 90 days okay. uh, just focusing on helping people achieve what they're after. And in 90 days, I was able to help 33 people wow. who I've never met before. So now I know that you can do it. A lot of these dreams took me 10 minutes. So it's sort of like one of those things where you're like, okay, 10 minutes in an airport, and I can just connect this person with this person. So that's, that's sort of the functionality. I love this. Yeah, the app aspect came from Michael Cornthwaite um, and a bunch of other visionary people who I saw. I mean, Michael built a bar here <laughs> seven years ago with a vision, and that's it. And so I went to him and I said, what do you think I should do? And he said, you should build it into something that people can interact with each other. And then through a series of events, someone introduced me to David Hauser, who built Grasshopper. Right, that's huge. I don't really, yeah, <laughs> not the app guy, but, um, and then he connected me with this random man in Canada who's building it into an app. So that's what DreamMaker does. If you interact with it, it sort of makes your own dream come true at the same time without you really knowing it. it's happening. So it's like Tinder for dreams, right? Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's how the app, will, the app will function that way, okay. I guess. Okay, excellent. Um, and actually, Tinder, you should totally help this <laughs> because it's right up your alley for dreams coming true. That sounds That's awesome. A shout out to Tinder. Hello, can we just get some Tinder help, please, <laughs> for Dreammaker? <laughs> None of these people are inspired by Dreammaker. I, I, I am <laughs> definitely inspired. Oh, good. And I think that people are probably a little bit sad that it's not out yet. So if people want to um, stay kind of hooked up with all the info and the updates, how can they contact you and stay in touch? Well, the first thing is that you should decide if you want to make a dream come true. And through my website at uh, charleswrestler.com, I have a functionality that says, one of my core competencies is friendliness. You should talk to me and my email address. So if you have an idea or you want to get involved in First Friday or any of the things that uh, I might be able to help in some way with, definitely reach out. If you want to help make dreams come true, reach out there. Uh, Twitter, tweet me your dream. It goes on a, a master list that's going to populate the app in the beginning and uh, make some dreams come true, people. It's this great. sounds amazing, right? Dream maker. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you know, Ellen DeGeneres was able to crash Twitter with a picture of 20 plus celebrities and a hashtag, right? She crashed the whole site. So you're going to crash the dream maker? Well, think of what, think of the possibility of that, that the idea that just help one, two, or three people's dreams come true that are easy for you. And if that crashed Twitter, it would be a really different world that we're living in. I agree. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. awesome. Also, in remembrance of 9-11, I gave this interview. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> just really close to my heart. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
guys are definitely going to love this medical-themed episode. So we have a guest, and he's an integrative oncologist. You were trained at Harvard for oncology, but on top of that, you also went to Stanford and UCLA Medical School for acupuncture. So you were also a former Navy commander, and you treated cancer patients with traditional and complementary therapies. So I am really curious to hear about these, and I think they can maybe benefit the lives of all of us. So why don't we put our hands together for Dr. Lewinda. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. I always thought Dr. Dre would be my first doctor interview, but he sold out. He's rich. Sorry. He's got even probably more money than you as a doctor, so sorry. Very likely. Um, okay, so you're single and you've got a pickup line um, that talks about how you blog, but why don't you tell them you're a doctor? Yeah, so you're right, exactly. Being single doesn't help when girls say to me, like, so what do you do for fun? I'm like, well, um, I blog, and that doesn't go over too well, so uh, yeah, so. Right, because they're imagining being away from you and you're quietly typing. Yeah. It's just not romantic. It's not it's, sexy, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it is. Oh. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, right, several cool. people. That Thanks. was weird. <laughs> okay, so that what that is something women think because you cool. saw it. It was not Thank just you. like one that was like had that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what's integrative oncology? So uh, that's a combination of conventional cancer treatment that everybody knows, like radiation, which is what I do, uh, surgery, chemotherapy, uh, combined with complementary therapies. For example, acupuncture, herbal medicine, meditation, things like that. As, uh, along with uh, lifestyle changes, so for example, counseling on nutrition, anti-cancer nutrition, uh, exercise, stress reduction, avoiding toxins. You pull all this together, it's sort of the holistic way to treat patients with cancer, many different chronic diseases. All right, and that's one of the reasons that this is interesting that you got booked this week was because I, have, I dealt with a lot of cancer in my family, my mom died from it a little while ago, and I, I always hated how it was so messy, like how it was like sort of like you felt no control, you would go, I would watch her go under these radiation treatments where they're like, they're trying to get the general area, but you're basically destroying the body. So um, will you explain like when you went through UCLA and you were thinking about things like acupuncture and meditation, like how were you fitting this in and like why did you find it valuable to, to combine? So, I mean, initially uh, I thought acupuncture was a placebo. Uh, that's sort of the training that I got from, you know, sort of the conventional medical training background that I have. And so I decided to go into acupuncture to really do some research to actually figure out if it works or not. Uh, and basically, so I went through this program and didn't tell anybody that I was basically trying to de design research studies to disprove it, uh, sort of like the Trojan horse in the program. And only did I find out while I was in the program that uh, this stuff works really well. And since then, there have been thousands of patients that I've treated uh, for a variety of different conditions, and it's just incredibly effective. Uh, you look at the research in very, very rigorously reviewed peer-reviewed journals, and there's you know, fantastic research on acupuncture. Um, likewise, for meditation, for exercise, and a variety of different other complementary therapies that, that people can use to help change health outcomes. And so I thought, well, maybe if you combine all of these things together, maybe patients will hopefully do better through cancer treatment. And there's this movement out there called integrative medicine, uh, which I sort of jumped on the coattails of. And uh, we have actually a subspecialty of that, of integrative oncology. So there's actually a Society for Integrative Oncology, and there's a, there's a few other different organizations that do uh, promote this sort of thing academically. And I jumped on that, and I thought that this is definitely the, the way, the future of uh, treating cancer patients. Okay, because I definitely, um, in all honesty, I get sort of skeptical when I hear some of the things too, because yeah. um, I just don't hear it from every doctor. So I also think, though, that it's, I, it could be likely that every doctor thinks the same way and they don't explore new things. So um, without, you know, without like actually saying whether it's great or not, like where um, did you figure out that this was something that you wanted to like actually prescribe to patients? And are you, I, I, we talked earlier, so you'd be willing to share those links so I could put them under the YouTube video. So if you guys want to actually just read what he read that made him have that decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if if you're looking for information on research for justification of you know, for example, acupuncture, you know, the um, there, there's a variety of state organizations that that basically have uh, you know great links that I can that I'll definitely link to. Uh, the National Institutes of Health, World Health Organization, they also have great links for a lot of these things. 
And what I'm specifically picking are things that are evidence informed. I mean, these yeah, are really right. research based things. I'm right, not just. Right, because you Google, like, you know, is Viagra good? And it's like, right. yeah. And then it's like, is Viagra bad? And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, wait, well, it can't be yes both ways. Right. No, Viagra's good. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> not that I know personally, but. To you know, say, I do prescribe anything that you, that. any medicine you right. yeah, have. Yeah. These guys. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. <laughs> They've got problems. Seriously. Get them some Viagra. Yeah. Okay. That one, um, that one in the back. Yeah. Okay. So, so what are the resources again that you recommend for anybody that's trying to look up things and make their own decisions? What I would do specifically is because I spend all of my time doing this, um, I'm really obsessed about it, is actually to go to my website, which is integrativeoncology-essentials.com. And you'll find a ton of information there. It's all you know, the latest information on research studies that have come out. Um, basically looking at all the different topics of integrative oncology and integrative medicine. So if you just do integrativeoncology-essentials.com, you'll find pretty much everything. Gotcha. Okay, well, so, and you're dealing with these people that have a very scary thing happening to them. And I was curious, what have you learned from working with so many people who are going up against likely the biggest challenge in their life? Like, what is the kind of entrepreneurial sub-message that maybe we could share with everybody? I think the big deal is empowering your patients. You know, right now, you know, for, for the most part, patients will come, they'll see me in clinic, uh, they'll expect me to be like most other doctors, which is basically to, you know, uh, essentially, this is what you're going to do, we're going to do this to you, and th this is your option. Uh, but if you give patients a variety of things that they can do on their own, empower them, uh, for example, with a variety of lifestyle changes or complementary therapies that, that I can teach them how to use, um, that's really huge. Uh, so empowerment gives patients the, you know, the ability to feel like they're actually part of their own care. And uh, when you feel like you're part of your own care, you feel more in control and less stressed and you know, more likely to hopefully do better. We know that uh, studies show that patients who feel more in control tend to do better with their treatments. Yeah, I want to feel more in control. Yeah, why not? Well, so, okay, so let's pretend we all have, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Let's, I am not going to say that, but I, let's say that um, all of us want the benefits of that control right now. Mm -hmm. How would we go about that? Like, what would you recommend to us? It, well, it, you know, it's, it's going to be person specific. You know, of course, it depends on exactly what things are going on. Uh, so for if you have cancer uh, and you have a specific type of cancer and we're about to do, let's just say, radiation to you, and I, I know that you're going to get tired from treatment because that, that happens. Um, you know, I'll talk to them about a variety of things that may be helpful for, you know, for fatigue. The number one thing is actually exercise, the exact opposite of what people think, you know, to do. Um, so when you're tired, you should go work harder? You actually should exercise because it's the right. one thing that's, that reduces the... Uh, exercise thing, the, yeah, yeah. It's a miracle worker. True, drinking yeah. beer, yeah. Okay, that's okay. Like also a good one, too. That all reduces right, stress, right. which makes you feel better, so... Yeah. It's been empty for three sips anyways. Right. I just don't. So duels, anyhow. Just can't get another right now, so dealing with it. Um, anyways. Okay. All right, so all right, well, like, so we'll come to the end of our time. So let's just make sure people know where they can learn more. We're going to put links in the YouTube channel, but we're also uh, direct them to your blog, and then also um, any other kind of resources that people should follow up with you. Um, well, 21st Century Oncology is where I work here in okay. Las Vegas. So uh, anybody can find me through 21st Century Oncology, which is 702-894-5100. Okay. And I just want to put a plug in. There's amazing doctors here in town. That's one thing that I think is very important for people here in Las Vegas to realize. A lot of people end up, you know, thinking that they need to go elsewhere for amazing doctors. Yeah, where's, and where's healthcare in the world or something, right? It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it, the bottom I line is, it, yeah, the bottom line is that, you know, there are some amazing people who are here. Uh, you know, we have doctors that are being recruited from all over, you know, all over the country, and a couple of them are actually here today as, as my guests. Uh, oh, cool, yeah. Thanks Dr. for your hard work. Dr. H.L. Greenberg and Dr. Gr J. Krishnan, who's right sitting over back there as well. Oh, very cool. Thank you for supporting. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, anything else? Got your, got, your, got your plug in. We know that there's good doctors somewhere in here. And where do we find? I mean, that's, what, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. How do we get? Where are the good how do you doctors? Find how do we, out? Yeah, like I know we have two here, but they're right. going to leave, and right. then yeah. So how do you know? Yeah. So the, right. The bottom line is, I think that if you feel that your doctor that you've gone to is like um, really amazing, or some you've asked a friend and they have a really good doctor that they like, the word of mouth is really the big okay. deal. So you ask yeah. them. And they'll tell you also, if you go to a good doctor, they'll tell you who the other good doctors are. But it's really word of mouth. Yeah. 
because we right. have a lot you of travel in packs. I can see. We actually okay. do. Yeah. That, yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate you coming on. All Thank right. You. Thanks. Welcome, I'm here with Erin McDermott, our sponsor from Axion. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, so tell us a little bit about Axion. Sure, so we're a nonprofit micro lender. We do small business loans that range from a thousand bucks up to 500,000. We've been around for 20 years and we've just expanded into Nevada. So, you know, we're here to support startups, expansions, create jobs, stabilize families. We're really excited to be in Vegas. Oh, awesome. Well, welcome. Thank you. How do you decide whether you invest in a small business? Totally. So really nothing is off limits. We love startups. You know, we'll work with artists, we'll work with breweries, we'll work with videographers, we'll work with restaurants, transportation, um, all sorts of industries. Um, and we'll work with folks to really repair their credit. So um, if they're looking to, you know, pursue their dream of small business ownership, but also might have some credit issues, we can work with them to make it all happen. Okay, awesome. So how do you decide, like once you've decided you're going to invest in them, what kind of support do you give them? Sure. So besides financing, um, we have a really cool mentorship program. We've got classes. You know, we've got other community partners that we can link them with. Um, and it really is. It's a community of support. Um, so it's more than just a loan. Okay. So I know you guys really pride yourself on your client experience yes, and about. the testimonials totally. of your clients. But um, I actually don't need you anymore because I ran into <laughs> one of your clients, your first client from Nevada, Trey mm -hmm. at the bar. So I figure I'll just bring him up myself. Yeah, let's do it. Let's All do right. it. All right. So Trey, you want to come join us? Woo! <laughs> so welcome. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So let's hear your testimonial. What has Axion done for you and how have they been supportive? Uh, well. I started my business up in April. Do you want me to hold on to this mic? Go for <laughs> yeah, it. So it's not. Um, I started in April. It was a video production company, and uh, it was, I needed a little bit of money to to get things going for a computer and things like that. And so I was actually on Entrepreneur.com, and I was just reading articles and stuff, and it came up micro lend, micro loans, excuse me. And uh, and so they had a few companies that that helped uh, small businesses, and Axion was was one of them. And so I, I applied for one. It was like two in the morning, and uh, and so I was like, hey, we'll see what happens. You know, I kind of just threw it out there. I, I you know, it, it was uh, 20 seconds it took to to apply for a loan, not expecting anything. And then the next day, I got a phone call, and they said, hey, we're willing to work with you. I, I asked for this much money, and they said, we'll give you this much money. And it, you know, it was a good amount. It was fair, and I and I was like, okay, cool. What do I do? And they said, just uh, just fill out this paperwork, get it notarized, and send it back. And within a week. From when I when I applied, I had the money in my bank account, and so it was wow. it was just right there, and, the, and it was at great timing, and it was a you know the service was great, and there it was a uh, it was way better than banking because I felt it was more personable, you know someone called and they, they asked me what I was doing, and, and they took an interest in me, and and uh, it, I was blown away at how how amazing they were. To Cool. Well, thank you so much for letting me pull you up here and hear that ourselves. Yeah, so, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, Trey. <laughs> well, 
All right, Erin, so um, tell everyone where they can find you and your social media and all that. Yeah, totally. So I think the best place to go is to our website. So it's Accion, A-C-C-I-O-N-N-V for Nevada, dot org. So definitely just Google Accion Nevada. You'll be able to, you know, you'll find us um, and we can get you a loan really quickly. And we, we are, we're looking to, you know, stabilize um, the community and, you know, create jobs and just support folks um, and helping them accomplish with, you know, their dreams. Okay, cool. We're all yeah. about that. Yeah. So also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Downtown Podcast. And then also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Vine. And also I think we have one more surprise. There's two people in the podcast family that have had a birthday this week. <gasps> Miller, who is partying hard in Israel, but we also have, Lizzie has our little, our birthday cake for Kyle, who's in charge of our social media. So we want to wish him a happy birthday, and he's going to be blowing out the candle for himself and Miller. So yay, happy birthday. What a cool cupcake. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Okay, I am here with um, long time running Steve. You've been coming to all of our podcasts, so thank you so much. I've been a lot of them, yes. A lot of them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so you get to share the fortune yes, for the week. Yes, I get to share the not fortune for the week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've warned me that it's going to be nothing. Yeah, it's to not, do nothing with the... to do with the fortune. Okay, I will so almost guarantee it. Put us out of our misery. What is the fortune for this week? The guy next to me has a bottle of pickle juice. The guy. <laughs> Next to me has a bottle of pickle juice. Okay, okay. Dan, he's leaving. And Dan has been made. Okay, okay, okay. So I want to explain exactly how this became so context sensitive. Dan, are you ready for this? Okay, so the fortune for this week was actually insert witty fortune here. <laughs> So it was a wild card, and thank you very much for that. Very locally <laughs> sensitive. Thank you, Steve. And My pleasure. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>